A fossil hunter is given a chance to join a renowned paleontology professor in his quest for the Valley of the Dinosaurs. However, their plane crashes right in the middle of a cursed land, home to a native people who are known cannibals. To make it back to civilization, the passengers must find their way through the jungle, where far more sinister forces than flesh-eating savages reside. In a bus traveling through the dusty road sits two foreigners, Professor Ibanez and his beautiful daughter, Eva. When the vehicle reaches the hotel, the local children welcome and seek money from guests. A hotel worker ushers them inside the building. They meet with the owner, who immediately apologizes for not giving Professor Ibanez the two rooms he procured through a letter. The owner says there's been an increase in foreign visitors who need a place to stay, but he's added a bed in the professor's room for his daughter. Ibanez asks the owner if he's arranged two seats on the plane, which the hotel owner assures he did. Suddenly, a man and two beautiful women wearing skimpy outfits enter the lobby. Jose asks the owner if their car has arrived, and the group leaves after the affirmation. Feeling gossipy, the owner tells Ibanez that the man is fashion magazine photographer and two models with him are Belinda and Monica. They ride in a car with an accommodating driver who keeps stealing glances at the lovely ladies. They drive past a truck full of bananas, where Kevin Hall lies amongst the produce after hitching a ride. The driver carelessly rolls Kevin's luggage to the ground, spilling the prehistoric bones onto the street. He sarcastically calls Kevin a fool for collecting bones as he drives away crushing the fossils with his vehicle, much to Kevin's dismay. Kevin enters the hotel and wakes the sleeping owner, asking for a room. The older man states that there's no available space for him. However, when the fossil hunter flashes his credit card, the greedy owner agrees to provide accommodations. Later, Kevin sits by the hotel bar waiting for his food, while the locals and guests gamble on rooster fights. In the crowd, a woman caked with makeup and dressed in fancy clothes, Betty Hines, eyes Kevin from the opposite side of the room. Across her is her husband, John, an ex-soldier who fought in the the Vietnam War. He berates Betty for looking over at another man, then she returns by humiliating him for his inability to bring her joy in the bedroom. John's left speechless as he drinks his liquor in misery. Then, the pilot enters the crowded room and asks to speak with John privately regarding his next trip. They sit next to Kevin, and the pilot mentions a dangerous side trip they'll have to take to the Valley of the Dinosaurs. Hearing the conversation, Kevin is intrigued and tries to buy the pilot into taking him on the plane, then blackmailing the older man when his first tactic fails. The pilot finally agrees, but Kevin must first ask permission from Professor Ibanez. Upon hearing the name, Kevin's face lights up, since he's aware of the professor's work. Soon, the photographer and the two models return from their photo shoot. One of the drunk gamblers touches Monica inappropriately, and Kevin comes to her aid, causing a commotion. Unfortunately, the drunkard has two imposing brothers who easily beat up Kevin. Later, Kevin lies in bed moaning in pain when he hears a knock on the door. Monica enters the room and thanks him for saving her earlier. She kisses Kevin and shows her gratitude by making love to the fossil hunter through the night. The following day, Kevin enters the professor's room to speak to him about the plane ride, but when he peeks through the door, he sees Eva bathing. The woman, who thinks the person who entered the room is her father, asks him to hand her a bathrobe. Mesmerized, Kevin follows the lady's request, but when she sees the stranger, she screams in fright and demands he tell her who he is. Right on cue, the professor returns and angrily asks what Kevin is doing in the room. The younger man introduces himself as a paleontologist and a fan of the professor's work. He flatters the older man when he mentions that he's read all his books. As per Kevin's request to accompany them on their trip to the Valley of the Dinosaurs, the professor grants him permission, much to Eva's annoyance. On the plane are eight total passengers, Professor Banyas, Eva, John Hines, Betty Hines, Jose the photographer, Belinda, Monica, and Kevin. During the flight, sudden turbulence hits the aircraft as it flies over the cursed land. The passengers scream in fear, holding on to anything they can to keep steady. Desperate, the pilot attempts to make an emergency landing in the middle of the jungle, as he admonishes himself for agreeing to fly over the mystical rainforest. The plane lands with a loud crash as it slams down to the ground, ending the lives of Monica, the pilot, and Professor Banyas. Eva cries in anguish over her father's demise, but there wasn't much they could do since they're stranded in the middle of nowhere. The survivors decide to follow the veteran soldier's orders after he promises to use his skills to guide them back to civilization. However, Kevin doubts John's capabilities since Vietnam differs greatly from the Amazon. They traverse the forest with John taking the lead. Soon, Belinda trips and one of her heels breaks. John chops off both heels from her shoes, making it easier for the model to use them in the jungle terrain. Mournful and weak, Eva falls to her knees, stating that they should just leave her behind, but Kevin helps her up to her feet and encourages her to move on. Later, they reach a swamp where the group sees human heads and skulls displayed to scare away trespassers. Kevin warns John not to move into the natives' territory because it'll endanger everyone, but the ex-soldier doesn't listen and pushes through with his planned route. Along the way, they hear the natives chanting from a distance, so everyone crouches into the mud to hide. Betty notices that her submerged arm is feasted upon by multiple leeches, compelling her to scream in fear. 
Fortunately, Belinda covers her mouth to keep her voice down, warning her that the cannibals might hear her scream. When the natives chanting has stopped, the group traverses into the woods to find a river source. John tells his wife to wait before he removes the leeches, because ripping them off too quickly might lead to an infection. After some time, John lets them rest between the trees, as he digs a small pit beside his crying wife. John commands the photographer, Jose, to grab a few dry twigs. Jose lazily gets up due to his huge camera bag hanging on his shoulder. This annoys the ex-soldier, who doesn't want them to bring any unnecessary baggage, since it just slows them down. He snatches the bag from Jose and smashes it on the ground. After Jose returns with the dry twigs, John puts them inside the pit and lights a fire just big enough to induce heat and smoke. He pushes his wife leech-infested arm into the hole to smoke out the suckers until they slowly let go. John grabs and eats one, making the other grimace in disgust. While resting, the group hears the cannibal tribe singing, and Kevin thinks it's the natives' way to thank the spirits for their fruitful hunt, which also means they're done hunting for the day. Seconds later, Eva, who's sitting on the ground, sees a large snake beside her and screams in fear, alerting the cannibals of their presence. Kevin easily tosses the snake away, but the natives have been alerted, and John berates Eva for her stupidity. To calm the others down, Kevin tells tells them that the tribe won't haunt until morning since they fear the black spirits in the night. He urges his companions to travel in the dark to prevent the cannibals from catching up to them. Later, they reach the river, and everyone hurriedly drinks and dunks themselves in the water to relieve their sore bodies. Eva notices John's hungry look as he watches the ladies from across the stream, making her uncomfortable. Suddenly, they hear monkey noises from the trees. Kevin suggests they keep moving, because the tribe hunters could be the ones creating the sound. Aggravated, John lashes out at Kevin for contradicting his commands. The two men get into a scuffle, and as the ex-soldier is about to slice Kevin with his knife, the fossil hunter raises his shotgun, ready to fire to protect himself. The fight comes to a halt due to Betty's aggressive suggestion for Kevin to shoot her husband. Soon, they continue to traverse the river when Jose suddenly screams out in pain. The others immediately get up on the rocks when Kevin warns them of piranhas. He hands his gun to Eva and bravely pulls the photographer to the shore. However, the man's leg has already been eaten by the flesh-eating fish. Screaming in pain, Jose begs them to help him. However, to everyone's horror, John plunges a knife into the crying man's torso. Angered, Kevin asks John why he did such an evil thing, and the men resume their fight. Unfortunately, Kevin doesn't have the gun in his hand. As the two men give everything they have into the battle, they fall into the stream. Kevin is at a disadvantage going against a trained ex-soldier, and he falls over a waterfall. Kevin swims into the riverbank, avoiding the crocodiles following him. He runs back to their previous location and sees his shotgun that Eva left behind. Meanwhile, John leads the three women deeper into the forest, where they hear the monkey noises again, making it clear that someone's hunting them. Eva is left behind by her much faster companions. Fortunately, Belinda comes back to get her and encourages her to keep moving. However, they're quickly surrounded by the natives, and the ladies desperately cry out for help. Elsewhere, the Heinz couple is still on a run when Betty accidentally falls into quicksand. As the cannibals catch up to them, John leaves his crying wife to sink to her death as she screams for his help. He runs through the woods, but the tribe hunters start shooting at him with arrows and blow darts until John falls to the ground and perishes. The tribe leader cuts his heart out and eats it, as a victorious gesture after taking down the elusive prey. Later, Kevin reaches the tribe's perimeter. He immediately hides from the cannibals as they return with the two women. In the tribe's village, Eva and Belinda are kneeling with their hands tied to heavy logs. They notice a shaman offering a prayer and bringing out a cup with incense, as the chief and the hunters inhale the smoke one by one. Kevin creeps in and slays the guards watching over the boats and pushes them into the river except for one. Afterward, the two women are forced to inhale the smoke, which makes them weak and dizzy. The native women strip Eva and Belinda's clothes off and dress them up in sacrificial tribal clothing before ushering them to kneel before an altar. After performing a ritual, a man in a skull mask appears in the smoke and commands the hunters to place the two women on the altar. The mysterious entity raises his claw to wound Belinda's chest and collects her blood into a cup. Far above them, Kevin prepares a makeshift explosive with a shotgun shell and lights it up. He tosses it into the crowd, blasting away the cannibals. Then, Kevin immediately rescues the women and takes them to the river. Kevin instructs the ladies to stay low, while rowing as fast as he can. After they've gone far enough into the Amazon River, Eva asks the man if the cannibals are still following them, and he answers that they're probably hiding behind the trees. Suddenly, loud cries sound out as two nets rise from the water, blocking the boat from both sides. Kevin shoots the chief and the net ropes, and they successfully escape the retreating cannibals. Hours later, they stop to rest by the riverside. Kevin and Eva decide to hunt for food, while Belinda recuperates from the long gash on her chest. While searching for food, Kevin and Eva start flirting and are about to make love, when they notice a fossilized dinosaur footprint. While searching for more footprints, they come across two men in poor condition, begging for help. Eva gasps in surprise, just as an older man appears behind the bush with a handgun pointed at the couple. 
He tells them that he owns the two escaped slaves. Then, he asks them about their purpose in the jungle, and Kevin says they crash-landed near the cursed land. However, the stranger finds the paleontologist claims hard to believe and assumes the couple is lying. The man introduces himself as China, the head of a gem mining group, and invites Kevin, Eva, and Belinda, whom China's men captured by the riverbank, to their mining base. After explaining their business and making the guest feel welcome, they knock Kevin out and tie him up in the pig pen. Meanwhile, China claims Eva as his property, while Miara takes the liberty to claim Belinda. As the mining blasts sound, Kevin wakes up in the pig pen and sees China sneering at him. The paleontologist lashes out, and China retaliates by kicking Kevin. Smelling the blood from Kevin's injuries, a pig immediately bites Kevin's leg. Meanwhile, Miara enters Eva and Belinda's prison hut and coerces the model to obey her, promising she'll set her free if she sleeps with Miara. With no other choice, Belinda agrees to the woman's suggestion. Later, Miara lets the model out of the hut and points to her path to freedom. However, China already expects Miara to pretend to set the model free, so he shoots Belinda in the back multiple times. That night, China enters Eva's hut and forces himself onto her. Meanwhile, Kevin chafes his wrist with the ropes, causing it to bleed. With the smell of his blood, the pigs start biting through the ropes. Kevin endures the pain until he's able to set himself free, and he flees into the night. The next day, China wakes up to find that Kevin's escaped. He orders his men to search for the paleontologist, and imprisons Eva in a bamboo cage as bait for the escape. Kevin calls China out, teasing the man into using up his bullets, as he throws handmade spears. With one bullet left, China points the gun at Kevin, who holds onto his last spear. Kevin throws a bag containing a rattlesnake at China, forcing the villain to use his last shot to slay the reptile. Kevin grabs the opportunity and throws his spear into the older man's chest, slaying him. After defeating China, Kevin releases the slaves and plants the mining dynamite at the base entrance. As China's men return, Kevin detonates the explosives and takes the men down. Later, a helicopter arrives and the pilot responsible for retrieving the gem searches for China. Unbeknownst to the pilot, Kevin and Eva sneak into the helicopter and use it to escape. In the helicopter, Kevin shows Eva a box of emerald stones he'd stolen from China, to the woman's delight. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.